Annie wasn't around when Carol first arrived on the square, so she wouldn't have known that love triangles run in the Jackson family. Dan Sullivan was Carol's boyfriend. She was even expecting his baby. But at the same time, Bianca had a big love in her life, the very same Dan Sullivan. When Carol discovered the affair, it was the beginning of one of the soap's biggest rifts. It was nothing, nothing at all! Oh! You stay away from me! She hated her for ten years. Mom, please! Because of her relationship with Dan. I'm your daughter. No. No, you're not my daughter. I mean, I love Carol because she's like, she's so messed up and she's always been messed up. You know, she's a brilliant character. She's so damaged and she always does the wrong thing and it gets incredibly aggressive about the fact that it's always somebody else's fault. You, you cheap little slapper! You're not even part of this family! I'm a slapper, am I, Grandma? Go on, tell everyone where you were today. You shut up. With Connor. You shut up! Oh. Yeah, what, well, did he take you back you then, did shut he? Up. Don't know what, you shut you up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I think if Whitney was going to blame anyone for her running away, it would be Carol. There's a lot of jealousy going on with Carol because clearly Whitney is younger and more attractive. She would have just not liked Whitney at all. The family member that let Whitney down the most undoubtedly would be Carol. I told you, I ain't going back there while she's there. Yeah, but it's your own. No, it was, Ricky, it was, until she ruined everything. Whitney will not live there while she's there. It's such hatred that Whitney's got for her. I'm not evil, Whitney. Sorry. I think Carol feels incredibly guilty for Whitney's disappearance. She knows that it was her decision to keep on seeing Connor that ultimately led to Whitney running away. And I think for the first time in, uh, in Carol's recent time on the show, we can see that there's a real vulnerability there. I'm going to do my very best to make everything up to all of you. You know, I... you're not going to go through this alone, Ricky. And, and I, I promise you, we'll, we'll do everything we can to get Whitney back here where she belongs. When your granny's your love rival, the rule book goes out the window. Luckily for Whitney, she's got Grand Uncle Max Branning on her side. Oh, hang on. Is that them snogging in the kitchen? Ooh. <laughs> Don't worry, this is one tryst Max didn't want to be a part of. Doing. No longer in Big Sister Carol's shadow, Max has taken a much bigger interest in his extended family. You need someone to look out for you, baby. That's me. No, I'm your older sister. I look out for you. You don't yeah, look that's out. That's right. You do look me. out for me. When Bradley died, you were there for me. And now, babe, now I'm here for you. You can't help me. No one can. He's even established himself as a father figure on the square. See that number there, look. It's a superhero hotline number. You remember it, yeah? Superhero well, sure. hotline? Oi, 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 don't tell everyone. I think family is everything to Max. He loves his kids above anything else and uh, he'll do anything for them. And he's a kind of, like, extra surrogate father across the square. Where's your superhero costume, then? Looks over the laundry, isn't it? Doc's giving it a wash. Serious, right? If you ever need any help... If you're ever in trouble, you call me, OK? Come and rescue you. What flavour milkshake do you want? Strawberry, please. Strawberry. <laughs> but when Whitney leaves home and spends the night at Max's, Carol isn't happy. Oh, just send her straight back home. Well, Carol, I said she could stay for a couple of nights. Well, what'd you do that for? Well, it can't be easy. You're always going to have a Bianca gone. No, no, it's like when these things blow up. Yeah, well, Whitney belongs at home, so just tell her she can't stay. And Max, oh, Max. kicks her out. Right? Yeah, I'm having a wicked day on the stool. Good. Um, so I Look, to... I'm going to cook dinner. Just to say thanks and that for letting me stay. Yeah, about that. It's a bit of a change of plan. You said I could stay? Yeah, well, now I'm saying you can't. Sorry. It's not long till Max gets a chance to make amends. <laughs> Whitney goes to Lauren's movie night, watches a scary film, has a white laugh. Next thing, Janine bursts through the door. What have you got that I haven't got? 
all right? Mm. Why ain't all that pretty on the inside? And we all know a little something about that. Don't worry. Hey. Go get her. You could have saved me. Get out. Spit. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Let me keep I'll get you a drink. Yeah. So how you feel about her? Yeah, loads. Good. Janine, she's what I call a horror night. Yeah, I always did prefer romance. I think when Whitney makes a move on Max, it's kind of like desperate. But of course, to anyone looking at it, it just looks like she's being kind of tarty and bored. She just sees this nice man that cares about her and wants to help her, and she just takes it the wrong way. Do you know what, Max? I you're not how I thought you'd be. No, was that? Scary. <laughs> Big softy, me. It's all front. Yeah. We did. So nice, no, Max. No, really, no, no. Oh, no. Go back to your mates. We've gone. Max, you understand me. Be patient and encouraging. Really, please don't do this, Come mate. Please, on, no, 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 no. What the hell are you doing? And. To Lauren, that's like appalling that she could make a move on her dad. You don't expect your best friend to kiss your dad in your kitchen when all your friends are there. It's embarrassing and disgusting. For a rare time in Max's life, he, he did the right thing. Like Ricky, Max wanted to help, but he was already too late. The Stenders aren't afraid to tackle taboo subjects. And in a first for the show, they work with a charity who know a lot about sexual grooming. A ten-minute exclusive preview of Whitney's story was broadcast on Comic Relief Night. Sexual grooming often happens to girls who are precarious. You get a girl, a troubled girl, who's had a complicated life, alienated from her friends and her family. You must be desperate. Not got any family. No friends. Look, it's all right to admit that you're desperate, you know. We've all been there. Comic Relief are, are very, very interested in the research side of things, and they had their own research, and they fed that in as well. And what was gripping was how seriously EastEnders took it and how they relished the opportunity to really talk to people to whom it was actually fa happening. So I met up with um, a few young girls who were um, victims of sexual exploitation, and... Um, really, really sad, actually, because they told me their stories and, and how it started, and it broke my heart. Whitney's had such a rocky ride, and she does also have a certain, you know, innocence and optimism to her, and those are, in this context, also dangerous qualities. Are you my mate, then? And whatever you want me to be. No, seriously, because I, I need a mate right now. Then it's looking all right, yeah. Do you? <laughs> Didn't just drive here to see the sights, did I? Was hoping to see you. Young, homeless, and scared, Whitney was vulnerable to sexual grooming. Take me away. What are your mates? I ain't got any mates. I ain't got no family or nothing. You must have someone. Look, is that offer still open? You stay around mine. Anything you want, Whitney. Anything you want. If you're a young, young woman and you're not feeling great about yourself and somebody comes along with a, a bit of money and a bit of um, a car and, and makes you feel good and knows exactly how to say the right thing to you, how quickly you could fall for that. You can just see it what's happening and how she's getting sucked in and the hope of something better and ending up in something much worse. Today, th things like this happen and it's good to make girls aware, anyone aware. I just really felt like I owed it to them to, to make this look real and as real as possible. And we just hope that the enormous size of the East Enders audience means that you take a subject that's been in the dark and that suddenly as a result of this collaboration the subject itself will have light cast on it and people will suddenly maybe even some people watching it say oh god I'm I'm in that situation someone I know is in that situation 
We've got to get out fast.